Sunday night hoops in the Sun Belt men's semifinals in Pensacola, Florida as the number four seed Appalachian State Mountaineers take on division rival and number two seed Coastal Carolina, the Chanticleers. Step inside the Pensacola Bay Center. I'm Matt Stewart joined by coach Nate Ross. A look at the first bank and trust bracket. And here's what they are playing for. A spot in the championship game on Monday night opposite the number one seed Georgia State Panthers. Panthers knocked out Louisiana 84-73 in our first semifinal of the night and the championship game tomorrow night at 7 o'clock Eastern on ESPN2. And Nate, legendary coach Cliff Ellis has the Chanticleers one win away from their first conference final since 2015, but they're going to have to go through their rival Mountaineers to get there. It's going to be interesting. Both teams are supposed to play home and home, but due to COVID issues, they have not played this year. So this will be the first time for the travel partners to play each other. Chanticleers at 17 and 6 on the season. They finished 9 and 5 in the Sun Belt, as we mentioned, clinching the number two seed in the East. And Cliff Ellis is as good as they come. He led Coastal Carolina to consecutive NCAA tournaments back when they were in the Big South in 2014 and 12, 2015. Still looking to do that here in the Sun Belt Conference. And Dustin Kearns has the Mountaineers at 15 and 11 overall. They were 7-8 and eight in the regular season, the number four seed in the East, and consecutive winning seasons for the program for the first time in over a decade. Nate, how about your keys to the game? Well, for these two that are going to be a very unique matchup, when you look at the uh, Mountaineers of Appalachian State, Coach Kern's big thing is get the best shot each time down the floor. That's going to be really important for them against the changing defense of the Chanticleers. And then the second one is they got to win the turnover game. The Chanticleers want to get in your face and turn you over and get some transition opportunities. For the shots, they got to get some fast break points because they want to run the basketball. And it's all about the glass. They are the third best rebound margin team in the nation at over 10 a game. If they board well, they play well. If Appalachia can handle them on the glass, it's going to be a great game. Dustin Kearns, this team has already won twice in this tournament. Chanticleers quarterfinal winners yesterday over Troy. So we are underway in the Pensacola Bay Center with the Chanticleers on offense in their home white. Inside they go in the first bucket by Mustafa. Big, strong young man out of Egypt, a red shirt freshman. He's got great post moves. The closer he gets, the better he gets. Starting five for the Mountaineers. Justin Forrest going for 28 points in the Mountaineers' upset of Texas State, the number one seed in regular season champions last night. Almonese had a huge game last night and misses his first three-point attempt. Starting five for the Chanticleers. Devontae Jones, a serious Sunbelt Player of the Year candidate. And as a guard, a really good rebounder at about seven a game. Inside, foul's going to be called on the Mountaineers and R.J. Duhart. Stam Mustafa is a old-fashioned back-to-the-basket post player. If he comes from away, away from the block, he's basically a passer. Big, strong young man, as we said, only a red shirt freshman. Averages 11 points, eight and a half rebounds per game. Coastal started out in a box in one. Kevin Williamson is guarding the man, and it's probably going to be Justin Forrest, and everybody else is in a four-man zone. We'll see if they continue with that. 6'9", 250, the red shirt freshman out of Cairo, and a 3 nothing lead for the Chanticleers in the first minute. You can see Kevin Williamson, number four, up there at the top with Adrian Delph, and everybody else is playing a four-man zone. Delph is running out of the picture, and so is the defender. It's four on four. Almonese jacks up the three in Kansas. Good move. Long way for the big man, Mustafa, to get there. He got there late. Almonese hit a deep three. Almonese picking up right where he left off last night in that victory over the Bobcats. Pass to... And Mustafa nearly denied. Duhart's got his hands full. And Mustafa gets tied up 
by Gregory. And let's check the call here. The four man zone. You can see Mustafa there. He's guarding the ball. And then he's got to run out to guard Almonesi. Great spacing by the Mountaineers. Tough cover for a big man to get to the corner. He couldn't get there. So the tie, uh, pardon me, the tie up in the possession arrow belongs to the Mountaineers. Same D. The four guys in the zone have to communicate or they give up wide open threes like that. Rim out by Justin Forrest. He went for 28 in that victory over the Bobcats. Deba on the drive, pulls up. Dishes inside Devontae Jones, the old fashioned scoop shot. Coastal up 5 3. Devontae Jones gets 20 a game and he scores in many, many different ways. His three pointer is like a set shot. He's got the little teardrop. He's got the little, as you said, the old fashioned one, because that's what it was. Very versatile player, great rebounder. He'll be on the floor more than anybody for those balls. Garrett Green puts it on the floor. And the ball goes through the paint and out of bounds. Anthony Jordan signals possession belongs to Coastal. Garrett Green, the senior guard out of Baton Rouge, having eight points, five rebounds per game. Inside Mustafa. They've got Gregory on him right now. Mustafa making his presence felt. Seems like it's pretty obvious, Nate, early on. They want to work Mustafa very hard. Well, Coach Ellis loves to play inside out. He, I, he's not real concerned about Mustafa shooting it every time, but the ball's got to touch the paint. Now, Palacio, on the other hand, is really good at doubling the post, and after two buckets by Mustafa, we'll probably see that next time he touches it. The miss by Almanasi this time, Gregory. Knocked it out of bounds. Hassan Mustafa gets it up top and keeps moving right to the block off a back screen from Deba, and then he's got the easy post move for two. He scores per game. Had 20 points against Troy last night in the quarterfinals. And a three-pointer off the front iron, block, boxed out by the Mountaineers, and Almanasi will bring it up. They got to block him out because the Chanticleers are as we said, third in the nation in rebound margin, a great offensive rebounding team. James Forrest, kick outside, Almanasi. Ten on the shot clock for Forrest, who drives and challenges Mustafa and wins the battle. Justin Forrest, 195 pounds in the beginning of the season, probably a little over 200 now, has the strength to go inside and finish through contact. Yeah, I'm getting ready to say, I mean, we, we see these weights on the roster. Yeah, those, right. those were two years ago. There's no way for us <laughs> is 195. Devontae Jones cut into the basket, could not hold on to the pass, and Gregory brings it across for the Mountaineers. Good takeaway by Donovan Gregory. And Delph airballs the three-point attempt, and we have our first timeout of the ball game. Coastal Carolina on top by two. Coastal 7-5 lead on App State in the early going. Nathan, how about your players to watch? Well, Justin Forrest was the man last night. Justin Forrest has been the man for the Mountaineers for many seasons. You can see his season numbers, and look what he's doing in the tournament. Double what he did in the regular season, which is just phenomenal for him and good for his basketball team. On the other side, Devontae Jones is the key that starts the, the engine of the Chanticleers. He's very consistent, as you can see, season numbers and um, the one game in the tournament numbers. He leads them, he does everything for them, and Coach Ellis is lucky to have him. Strong senior finish for Justin Forrest. He has scored 20 or more points in five of their last seven games. Devontae Jones hits the three-pointer. First bucket for him, actually the first three-pointer for him. He has five total points of Coastal's 10. Same defense. Now Tipler's guarding the man, man-to-man, -man, zero in the white. What you do is if you take the one player that's being guarded man-to-man -man out of it, just run your motion offense. The defense will make a mistake, as Mustafa did last time, and they got an open three. Jump ball. And it's going to go to Coastal. Devontae Jones, you got to guard him all over the floor. A little 
Screen by Tipler, the defender is late. Adrian Delph, Devontae Jones sticks a three. Devontae Jones, the number two scorer in the Sun Belt Conference, approaching right at 1,300 career points. Steals leader in the Sun Belt, number two in the country. Three steals per game, trailing only Richmond's Jacob Gilliard. As you take a look at the scoring leaders in the conference, Michael Flowers, we saw him put on a great performance here in the tournament in the first round. Adrian Delph says, not in my basket, and smacks Devontae Jones's layup out of bounds. 10-5 Coastal leading app here. Five minutes into the ball game. Little head fake didn't work. On Adrian Delph right there with him. Off the inbounds, Tipler the miss, Garrett. but the follow by Garrett Green. Garrett Green, more times than not, is the guy that you forget about. Is he giving you anything? And he's always in the right place to make plays like that. Scored 15 against Troy in the quarterfinals. Averaging right at eight points per game for the season. Gregory backing in, and that is going to be a blocking foul or an offensive foul. I think it's going to be an offensive foul. And it is. It's going to go against Gregory. Tell that'll you, be number one on him. Derek Green just does that kind of stuff. He's not going to get you 20 points, but he's made the great play. Just You can be moving if you're in a defensive stance. He was, took it in the chest. And if you're the primary defender like he was, you can be inside the arc and still have, have it be an offensive foul. Devontae Jones dribbling in traffic. Another one of those scoop shots. It's up and in. <laughs> Very Seven creative. for Devontae Jones. Very creative score. You know, the beautiful thing about that scoop shot is it draws a lot of fouls because you're coming at an un unorthodox shot motion. Guys are going to hack down and hit you across the arm and, a and, lot. And you're double clutching it more times than not, so they'll get you. And you can still get the shot off. He's strong enough to get it off. He was skinny when he came to college. He's about 200 pounds now. Yeah, he's put on a good 20, 25 pounds since he got there. Credits the strength and conditioning program at Coastal. Had some academic issues when he first signed and elected to take a red shirt his first year. And that turned out to be a wise decision. Three-point shot by Green is off the mark. Nine-point lead for Coastal. And that decision to take a redshirt year when he got there on campus helped him in so many ways, not only physically, but also academically. Learn, learn what college is all about. Shoot, when I was in high school, I just paid attention. I didn't study. I didn't know what studying was when I got to college. Devontae Jones goes to the bench. Cliff Ellis calls him an old school player, can score on all three levels. Go to the rack, mid-range game, got a three-point game. Shoots free throws and defends, just the kind of player you want. And now with Tariq Dixon coming back from injury and DeAnthony Tipler, there's all kinds of point guards that can play. Devontae Jones can get a blow once in a while, not have to go 35, 37 minutes. Yeah, and more importantly, when he's on the floor, you can play him off the ball, free yep. him up to get more offense. Doesn't have to worry about bringing it up against pressure. Now it's straight man to man for the shot to clears. Forrest drives into traffic. Ball was batted out of there. Almonese straight on three. And the rebound by Coastal Carolina. Deba brings it up. And pass intercepted by Almonese. Got a break against Deba. Going to feed it back to Forrest, who lays it in. Great Actually, job. that was Gregory. Pardon me. Gregory with the layup. Two on one. Deba committed to the ball, which is what you want the defense to do. Then the quick pass to Donovan Gregory for an easy one. Seven-point lead for Coastal. Mustafa working against Gregory. Picks up his dribble and a whistle. I believe we're going to have a foul on the Mountaineers. Eads. So number one on Michael Eads, the freshman out of Orlando Edgewater. There's the pass to Tipler. Almanis, he's chasing, and Eads gets him on the, as you just talked about before, that movement down is always called a foul.
Just look at what they list Eads at. It says 200. I might give him a couple more. Dustin Kearns has done a good job in his first two seasons at App State. It's all, about, to, it's all about developing a program. That's what he always talks about. You know, you got to develop the program, but let's face the reality of the situation in collegiate sports this year. You don't get that long period like you used to. The nope. development's got to happen quickly. It does. People Doesn't have, have to no be a patience. microwave, but it can't be one of those, you know, ovens in which you pop it in there and come back like a crock pot. You can't wait that long. Well, you got back-to-back -back winning seasons, and that's uh, that hadn't happened in Appalachian in a while. Well, Montessi misses the three, and the rebound controlled by the Chanticleers. Three in rhythm is way off the mark. Nine-point lead, Coastal, as Appalachian State Mountaineers come back on offense. And a foul is going to be called on Caesar, and that's going to bring us to our second timeout. Coastal on top by nine, but App State, don't sleep on these guys. They can come back on you. Texas State learned that last night. Almonacy to Gregory. Opening eight and a half minutes. Coastal Carolina on top by nine. Shanta clears six of 12 from the floor, 50%. App only three of 12, 25%. And both teams have hit one three-pointer so far. Mustafa's got two of those buckets, and they're both layups. So those are obviously high-percentage shots. Devontae Jones, he's got two layups, too. They're kind of dipsy due to layups, but uh, he just gets them all kinds of, of which ways. He's just a scorer. So App State on the inbounds underneath their own basket. Still trying to find the rhythm on offense here. We saw it last night against Texas State when James Forrest really, or Justin Forrest, that's the second time I've done that here in the tournament. Justin Forrest really got it going in the second half. Tipler into the front court. Back to Deba, back to Tipler. And Deba cut into the basket, couldn't contain the pass, and here come the Mountaineers. Good idea by Tim Caesar, just a little behind Ibrahim and Deba, and he couldn't catch up with it. Brown, shot rejected. Deshaun Thomas came over, secondary help, and blocked the shot. Deshaun Thomas does not play a lot of minutes, but he's got great skill, and he's six foot ten. LSU transfer. Keeps it in play. Good job by... Um, Devontae Jones to establish himself back in bounds. And I thought that um, Tipler got fouled, but I guess he uh, he stepped out of bounds. Shanta clears blocking four shots per game, which is fourth in the conference. Sean Parker in the game, so App using some players that didn't get on the floor last night against Texas State. This is their third game in three days, so that's a factor. Not only Straight that, away three. Coach is trying to find a combination to get some points. Deba kicks over to the wing, and the three-point attempt by Caesar rattles in and out. And out of bounds on Coastal Carolina. Yeah, Brima Deba is not the kind of guy that's going to take a three, and they're going to back off of him and dare him to shoot it. If he's wide open, he will, but he's more of a distributor. As you see Deshaun Thomas coming down, who just blocked that previous shot. Yeah, Deba number one in the Sun Belt, averaging 5.2 assists per game during the regular season. And, of course, he missed most of last season after going down with a knee injury in the Chanticleers' potential upset of Baylor earlier in the season. Yeah, I was doing that game on national radio. They were up six. He got a steal and had a breakaway layup. No contact whatsoever. His knee just gave out, and he was done for the season. Forrest drops it back, gets it back. Eight on the shot clock when Forrest takes the shot, airballed it. Great move, great, great defensive movement by Chanticleers. Take away an open look. Deba puts it on the floor, mid-range jumper, hard off the back iron. Collision as 
Devontae Jones ends up hard on the floor. It's a stat that is not kept, but I guarantee he leads the nation in being on the deck. He just hits the deck a lot during a basketball game. Adrian Delph is going to be called for the foul here. He hit him pretty good. Just going for the ball, though. It's not intentional by any means. So Delph with his first personal foul. We have 14 fouls on App State here, and Coastal has two. Nine and a half. Now under that to play here in the first half. Winner meets Georgia State for the Sun Belt Championship tomorrow night in this building. 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 local, and it'll be on ESPN2. Duhart takes the three and chased down by Gregory in the corner. Good help there. Cut to the basket. Missed by Gregory. I don't know if Deshaun Thomas blocked it, but he's definitely altered it. Mountaineers have now missed 14 of their first 17 shots. They're 3 for 17, 18% from the floor. And Thomas over the back there. Good block out by the Mountaineers, and Thomas came over the back with the foul. So Deshaun Thomas picks up his first personal foul. That'll be the third team foul on the Chanticleer. Tenth all-time meeting between the Chanticleers and Mountaineers. And App leads at 6-3, including a 70-65 win over the Chanticleers in the first or second round of the playoffs or tournament a year ago. That was the last game for both teams as the COVID shutdown came right after that. Unfortunately, I remember that date very well. I think we all do. I yep. think everybody <laughs> remembers exactly what was going on. I know I was getting ready to fly to New Orleans for the Sun Belt semifinals at the Smoothie King Center. I was going to fly out on Friday, watching on Thursday all the college basketball tournaments, watching the Big East and watching that game get canceled at halftime. And then watching the Big Ten and then the ACC and the SEC and all of them cancel their tournaments one right after another is why like watching dominoes fall mm, I agree the difficulty in that lap. I was sitting at the Big South women's tournament watching practice getting ready to start the tournament the next day and ooh, Good defense there By um Forrest and everybody's cell phone went to the rear at the same time and they all looked around and said we're done well, it really all started the night before when the NBA game got yep. canceled after Rudy Gobert had tested positive. Well, a lot of layups and a lot of blocks and a lot of missed layups the last couple times down the floor both ways. And little did any of us know what we were getting ready to go through oh, nobody. over the next year. Missed by Caesar. Well, not a lot of makes right now, no. Coach. Coach Ellis wants to touch the paint every time. That ball has not touched the paint in a while. Coastal 7 of 19 shooting. App 3 of 22. Everybody looks a little fatigued out there as well. Timeouts coming next dead ball. Dell hits the floater. He shot off a little curl. Stopped with, uh, without letting his momentum create a charge as well. Nice play. Isn't that kind of the key, Coach, when you're missing shots? Just keep getting closer to the basket. Ultimately, they're going to go in. Yeah, absolutely. Closer you get, higher percentage. Instead of shooting 18 and 19 footers, start shooting 8 and 9 footers. Gregory on the break. You stop at two early laps, and now the Mountaineers are doubling it every time, and they're blocking it, and they're messing them up. Really good defensive adjustment by Coach Kearns and coming. Reverse layup by Delph, and the Mountaineers have scored two baskets here in the last minute after scoring only three baskets in the first 13 minutes of the game. And for Devontae Jones to make a play. Jones heaves it up. Oh, he got fouled. Boris back to Almanasi and fouled on the three-point shot. Boy, that was great ball movement and man movement. They changed sides of the floor. Almanasi wide open in the corner and the defense lost him. 
So Appalachian State on a 7-0 run. They've cut the Coastal lead to four, and they'll try to make it an 8-0 run of the line when we get back. Seven-0 run for App State as they have climbed back in this game and cut the Shams lead to four. Adrian Delph a little runner and then Monis he gets it to Delph for an easy one using the rim as a screen and then he returns the favor for Mr. Almonesi for an and one after a three, his second three so far. That's seven quick points. And number five is at the free throw line. So Al Monesi will try to make it an 8-0 run when he comes out of this timeout and steps up to the line. These will be the first free throws for App State in this game. Transfer out of uh, Southern New Hampshire and then Stony Brook as a grad student for the Mountaineers. Had a huge game last night. 17 points in the quarterfinal round upset of Texas State. And it's an 8-0 run now with the completion of the four-point play by Almanasu. Three-point lead now for Coastal. Anthony Tipper is not taking a three yet. Normally when he comes in the game, that's what he does. He makes threes. Because Almanasu knows he read the scouting report too. Nine on the shot clock now. Dixon down to four on the shot clock. And Dixon heaves it up there, wild shot. As you're anticipating a foul that's not being called, just work for a better shot. Don't just chuck it up there hoping the whistle blows. Dell in the paint. Got his own miss and puts it in. 10-0 run, and App is down only one. stick to it of this by Mr. Delph right there. Missed it, got it right back, put it in. Deba works around the paint, back out. Coastal really having a hard time getting in sync on offense, it would seem. Stolen away and a chance for App to take their first lead of the game. They have a tendency to lose spacing and get bunched together, and then the passes just don't get there, and the Mountaineers are on a roll. 13-0 run as Forrest knocks down the three. First lead of the game for the Mountaineers. Let's get bunched up, and then that, that easy pass isn't easy when there's two defenders there as well. Shanta Clears have now gone more than five minutes without scoring. And the count will continue. During that five minutes, Matt, you can probably count on a couple fingers the good shots that they have taken. Not many of them. Green with the rebound. Green takes the three, and that will end the drought. <laughs> it's amazing to me watching film and watching the Shanta Clears how many times Gary Green makes the play when they need a play, whether it's defense, whether it's draw charge. And in that case, hit a three. Coastal back up by one after Green hits the three. It's the second three of the night for the Chanticleers. Almanasi kicks to the corner and a reach-in foul on Dixon. And a timeout on the floor with just over three minutes to play here in the first half. App State has battled back into this game, Nate. Well, the shot that clears are not getting good shots, and the Mountaineers are getting great shots. Back at Pensacola Bay Center, the semifinals in the men's bracket. Georgia State has already advanced tonight, knocking out Louisiana. So they're in the final, awaiting the winner of this game right here in Coastal on top by one. With just over three minutes to play here in the first half, Matt Stewart joined by Coach Nate Ross. And the Panthers, 84-73 winners over the Louisiana Raging Cajuns in our first semifinal of the night. Corey Allen went for 21, four three-pointers for the Panthers in the victory, and Elio Nisosimi also had another double-double, the second of the tournament. There's Tipler with the runner, and if you back off Tipler worried about the runner, he will burn you with a three. So it's good that he established that early. Right, 
Not to do a lot of switching because they're all about the same size except for Mustafa, and they're pretty mobile as well. Eads was left open for a three, and Devontae Jones back in there with his two personal fouls brings it up. Tipler, contact, no whistle. Diva spins it inside for Mustafa. That was not a great pass. Tough angle. Tough angle, and he threw it down to his, to his ankles. He's 6'9". You got to you throw a bounce pass. You got to come up around his waist. Big guys don't want to bend down and get it. They want it to pop right up there to their belly. Absolutely. Inbounds for the Chanticleers. And Tipler up close, Miss Mustafa got the offensive rebound. And Mustafa battles inside and one. One of the great assets Mustafa has, besides being as big as he is, he rebounds with two hands. That's after he got it. A little fake first and a step through and a chance for an and one for the big man. That's the first points for Mustafa since very early in the game. Yeah, too early, too early layups, and then that's been it. He has really good form in the line, he just doesn't shoot a great percentage. He looks good. A little jealous and associate coach Benny Moss there talking over a little strategy. Associate head coach Benny Moss. Five point lead for Coastal. Cliff Ellis. How long will he keep going? 46 seasons as head coach in college basketball. He's taken four different programs to the NCAA. He's taken this Coastal team to the NCAA tournament. As members of the Big South, he'd like to do it as a member of the Sun Belt. He's a win away from getting to the final. Forrest, battle for the rebound. Gregory could not hold on to it. And Devontae Jones comes out of the pack for Coastal Carolina. No look pass to Deba. And now the three and the miss by Green. Right in the middle of the offense, Gregory. Good defense by Devontae Jones not to get beat on the screen. Now Monacy missed the three. Mustafa the rebound. Diva brings it up. Mustafa inside again, so Mustafa has been effective when they get him the ball. Just a long drought between getting him the ball early in the game and now, now most recently in the last minute. Great position, just above the restricted arc. It's dead in the middle of the lane, and Ibrahim Adiba comes down and finds him. Watch where 44 goes, Mustafa. Off the screen from Garrett Green, Diva finds him in the middle, fake one way, go over the right or go over to the right hand with the, over the left shoulder. And he's so big, once his head and shoulders get past the defender, you're beat. Good move by the big man. Red shirt freshman from Egypt. Mustafa now with nine points and four rebounds, four of six from the floor. RJ Duhart was there, but he just had no chance. He went for the little head fake which most players forget to do now. It's a great move. And then he just went back over the left shoulder. Seven point lead for Coastal, 45 seconds to play here in the first half. Almonese will wait for it to get to the half court line before picking it up. Gregory, whipping around, Duhart will take a three. And the rebound controlled by the Chanticleers as Kevin Williamson went up to get it. Look for Tipler zero coming off a couple screens here for an open three. There's a difference of about three seconds in the game clock and the shot clock. Prima Dima is probably not going to shoot it, but he's going to make the decision as to who will. Now less than 10, and they put the offense in motion. Deba had the ball slip out of his hands, but apparently the Mountaineers touched it last. Plenty of time. 6.4. Deba from Sweden played at St. Benedict's Prep in the Northeast when he got to the States. Redshirt sophomore. Redshirted with that knee injury last year. Watch Tipler going out to the corner on Deba's side. There he goes. Oh, he's 
Right off the back <laughs> of Gregory, and Deba puts it in. Smart play by Ibrima Deba to know the defender's back was turning and to get an easy one. So Deba, who does not score a lot, averages only seven points per game, took advantage of the situation with Gregory, the defender, his back turned to him, bounced it right off his back, and got the easy two. I don't know if he established both feet in bounds as you're supposed to do, but it was still a heck of a play. Smart. Yeah, Nobody, I don't know that he did. No, I, he got one foot in. He definitely didn't get both feet in. Yeah, I think he jumped from out of bounds and grabbed that ball yep. in the air and flipped it over his shoulder and got the basket. As it is, it's a Coastal Carolina lead of 29-20 as we head to the locker room. Shanta clears behind Mustafa, 20 minutes away from facing the Panthers in the Sun Belt final Monday night. Pensacola Bay Center where Coastal Carolina 20 minutes away from advancing to the Sunbelt Championship game leading App State by a score of 29-20. Let's refresh your memory on the first bank and trust bracket earlier this evening. The Georgia State Panthers advanced with an 84-73 victory over Louisiana. So the Panthers in the finals now for the fifth time in seven years, knocking out the Raging Cajuns. And tomorrow night's championship game will be played at 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Central on ESPN2. Here's the tickets that have been punched to the NCAA tournament thus far. Liberty out of the Atlantic Sun. Moorhead State eliminating Belmont in the OVC final. Winthrop at 23-1, winning the Big South. And Loyola Chicago out of the Missouri Valley. Sunbelt entrance will be determined tomorrow night. Final play of the first half. How about Deba off the back of Gregory? Insult to injury as the chance lead by nine. Shanta clears on top by nine here in Pensacola. We've been ready for the start of the second half. Nate, let's take a look back at those first half highlights. Nobody in double figures as evidenced by what you just saw, 29-20 for the shots. But Almonte got it going with threes from either side. There's one on one side. And then Forrest gives him a nice pass there. He's got seven for the half. Delph on the other side with a couple of runners. Big strong kid takes it inside. He's got six for the first half. Nice put back on his own miss. And on the other side, the Shanta Clears are led as usual by their leader, Devontae Jones. Can score it from outside, can score it from the inside. He's got nine. And then Mustafa did his thing inside because they gave him the ball inside. Layup after layup after layup. And Isam, Isam Mustafa has nine as well with one free throw added in. Four of six from the floor and four rebounds in 16 minutes of work as we're back to action here in the second half and the Mountaineers on offense. There's the points we just talked about for each guy. Nobody in double figures yet. That will happen soon, we hope. 18 of the Shanta clears. 29 points coming from Jones and Mustafa. And the fadeaway by Delph. Really nice step back. 29-22. Delph with his fourth bucket of the ball game. He's got eight points and a rebound. Dante Clears went uh, diamond and one, boxing one, whatever you want to call it, one time early. After that, everybody's been man-to-man uh, -man the entire game. Coach Ellis will play some zone. He'll play some triangle and two. He'll play a bunch of different stuff just to throw off your rhythm offensively. Dante Clears, 86-68 winners over Troy in the quarterfinals yesterday. Appalachian State. Knocked off number one seed and regular season champion Texas State in the quarterfinals. Ball poked away from behind by Gregory. Ahead on the break to Forrest. And Delph in traffic shot it. Softly, but the follow by Duhart and one. He'll go to the line for a chance at a three-point play. If you are six foot eight or above and Duhart six nine, hang around the basket. The ball might show up. There's the miss. Duhart gets it on a nice little cut inside. Chance for an and one. 
So Duhart steps up to the line, two points today. And this will be just the second free throw attempt for the Mountaineers in this game. Well, they haven't attacked the basket a lot. And hence they haven't gotten fouled a lot to go to the line. Five quick points for the Mountaineers. They've cut the Chanticleers lead to four. Deba's pass deflected. Inside it goes to Mustafa anyway. And Mustafa continues to be a force for Coastal. Mustafa's got one, he's got a bunch of great qualities, but the one I love the most is he catches the ball, he rebounds the ball with both hands every time. Can't knock it out of his hands if he's, if he's got both hands on. He's too big and too strong. First player in double figures for either side. He's got 11. Now let's continue to switch on the perimeter. Duhart drives and jams. R.J. Duhart. And a strong start to the second half for the Mountaineers as they have outscored Coastal 7-2. to You are so much more mobile than Mustafa. That's a tough cover when you're going to close out and Duhart just blows right by you. Nobody helped. Diva, floater, off back iron and a whistle. How about R.J. Duhart with a strong move on the baseline? Mustafa goes out to close out. One little fake, and Duhart's just too quick for Mustafa. Easy dunk. Out of Boynton Beach, Florida, Boyd Anderson High School. Inbounds here for Coastal on the baseline. Mustafa in traffic, put it on the floor. Is able to muscle it away from the defenders. Get it up, but not in. Double in the post once again. Made the cardinal mistake, as you said, by putting it on the floor, but it recovered. But they double the post, the Mountaineers do, and they make it difficult for them. Duhart got the board. Forrest directs traffic out beyond the arc. Spin move. They whip it around for Almanasi. And the rebound by Mustafa, who's got five boards to go along with his 11 points. Devontae Jones with the left-handed scoop. He's got so many ways to beat you, and you, he, it's nothing's conventional. Jones now in double figures. He has 11 and seven rebounds. He's their leading rebounder tonight. He might be one of the best rebounding guards in the nation. He averages seven rebounds per game. That's the number he's got right now. Now Monacy, shot blocked by Mustafa. Green leads the break in traffic. Got it knocked away from behind. It'll be Coastal's ball. Vontae Jones comes at you, it's like a whirling dervish. You don't know, he's not gonna just lay it up normally. You gotta try to find the ball to block it. He goes around you with his non-dominant hand, left hand lays it in. 20 a game, and he's been so consistent the entire season. Six-point lead for Coastal. Three and a half minutes into the second half. No bounce off the back anymore for Diva. That was a one-time deal. And the bullet pass from Tipler was ill-advised and goes hard out of bounds. It was a 90-mile-an-hour fastball from four feet away. Not going to catch many of them. Almonese walks it across for the Mountaineers. They've outscored... Coastal 7-4 to start this second half. Now Monacy's pass was low and off the foot of Gregory. Went right around Mont Harvey, but lost it. And Jones' pass sails out of bounds. It's a turnover and fest. It has been, but Coastal still has the six-point lead. First Bank and Trust, making banking easier for you. Hercules Tires, right on our strength. Levy, recognition, recognition solutions that elevate performance. And by Crystal Clear Imaging, real print solutions, real big results. 
Six-point lead for the Chanticleers, the number two seed out of the Sun Belt East Division, went nine and five in the conference in the regular season. And App State is their travel partner, their geographic rival in the conference. But oddly enough, this is the first time they've played all season. COVID shutdowns wiped out their regular season matchups. Now, Monacy with the three. And tough. the Mountaineers down only three. He's been tough with the three ball first half, and then he comes back with one right there. Now, Monacy, the first Mountaineer to get to 10 points. Oh, they called that a two. Interesting. I no, that's a three. It was a three. The, our stat broadcast system, which Nate's in love with. I love it. <laughs> the best. Had it, had it down as a two, but it is a three on the scoreboard. Prima Diva with a little turnaround there. He's six foot six, and he's a point guard. So anybody that guards him, he's either bigger than or quicker than. Forrest, three-pointer. This is about the time that Justin Forrest got heated up last night against Texas State, and he finished with 28. He's done it so many times for the Mountaineers this year and last year. Lead for Coastal is down to two. Tipler with four on the shot clock in the paint off the back iron. Four. Oh Ooh. my goodness, what a collision. Tipler took the brunt of that one. Forrest, everybody thinks he's going to drive it to the basket, kicks to Almonese for an easy one, and then you go under the screen for Forrest and you get burned. And then the, Mr. Tipler took the blow right here. The foul is on him, but he paid the price. Mm. Forrest is a big man, and Tipler is not. Fortunately, Tipler didn't take the blow to the head. It looked like it was on his right shoulder instead. Forrest spins for the tie. Rebound controlled by the Chanticleers. And Green will clear it. Everybody collapsed on Forrest on that one. And then Deba gets tripped up and falls down. We'll have a foul on the Mountaineers. Both First team, foul on Justin Forrest. Both teams are really good at helping when somebody drives and when you get beat. The bad part about that is if they can kick it out to an open shooter, they have really good outside shooters. Diva in the circle. Bounce pass into the post. A couple of pump fakes. Nowhere to go with it. Stolen away by Forrest behind the back in the open field. And all the way through, had a shot blocked by DeBonte Jones. The other end, it looked like the Chanticleers had all five guys on offense in the in the paint. Watch number two come out of your picture. Or three, excuse me, and drill that one, Devontae Jones. I was impressed by the block. Look at the elevation and the spike like he's at the volleyball net. That yeah, was impressive. Inbounds, Almonese gives App State the lead. It's their first lead since late in the first half. 36-35, Mountaineers. Diva in traffic, had it roll off the rim. They volleyball it around on the boards, and Forrest comes away with it for App. John Thomas got the rebound, couldn't make it happen. Oh, you can't leave him open. Almonese, ditto. Back to back. Three-pointers by Almonese, and App State has their largest lead of the game. It's four, and Cliff Ellis wants a timeout. You can't leave the best shooter on the floor. Wide slap open in the corner. He just drilled you once. He's going to drill you again. There's Five. one side. Bingo. Five three-pointers for Almonese. He's got 16. Michael Almonese went for 17 last night in the upset against Texas State. He's got 16 here tonight against Coastal. The six-footer out of Brentwood, New York, is deadly from behind the line, and he's even better if you don't guard him.
Derek Green late on the closeout, Almonis, he tells his bench, yep, that was my three-pointer. Five of eight on his three-pointers, 16 points, five rebounds, three assists, and Michael Almonese has shot Appalachian State into a four-point lead, and the Mountaineers on a 9-0 run. Eight on the shot clock. Jones got knocked down on the three-point shot. No whistle. And the rebound controlled by the Chanticleers. Derek Green once again. And now Green will take the straightaway three. And the rebound by Forrest. And Forrest ran into his own man. Wow. Duhart, friendly fire, knocked him to his feet. Knocked him off his feet. Yep. Tim Caesar standing out of bounds. You can see his right foot on the gold there. It amazes me that these kids don't know where they are on the floor. It happens a couple times a game. Talk about an unforced turnover. Dustin Kearns, perhaps 12 minutes away from getting his team into the Sun Belt Finals to play the Georgia State Panthers tomorrow night. They've outscored Coastal Carolina 19 to six here in the second half. Off it back in there now, along with Tyreek Dixon. Delph, three, bounces off the rim and Jones gets another rebound. He's gonna get himself a double-double tonight. 11 points, eight rebounds. Coastal now two for 13 on their three-point shots. Mustafa's back in the game. Mustafa's got to touch the ball. That's when they've been most effective tonight, Nate, yep. when Mustafa has been active on the offensive end. And he can't be active on the offensive end unless they get him the ball. Absolutely. He's not a three-point shooter. That's right. As a post player, he relies on the guards to get him the ball. He works his butt off to get open. Now Almonese again. Ice cold. 19 points for Michael Almonese as he hits his sixth three-pointer of the game. Back the other way, and the answer from the Chanticleers and Tyreek Dixon. Dixon's smooth enough, and he's played some big times games at Middle Tennessee State in the NCAA tournament games, so he knows how to get it done. He's just been injured a bunch and been out twice in two different stints this season. Leg injuries each time. Delph, floater. Got his own rebound. Almanasi. He's human. Not his spot, though. It's true. Corners his spot. Mountaineers picking up the intensity on the defense, not getting beat off the dribble. Watch, they're going to come double. Mustafa. There it is. Finally, the double comes. Passes out of the Jones. We're down to six on the shot clock now. Green, three, airballed it. That's going to be a shot clock violation. They're going to let him play through. Appalachian's really smart on when to double the post. They don't do it till the ball goes on the floor, because that's when the move's about to happen. And they completely stop Mustafa from even taking a shot because of it. Almonese rises up this time. They might have got a piece of it. Foul is going to be called on Appalachian State. I think this will be on Xavier Brown. Michael Almonese has been the man of the night. Six three pointers, 19 points. Big reason why. Apps on top by five. Need for App State. You take a look at the scoring and the breakdown and how this game has turned dramatically in the second half. On the shooting touch of Michael Almonese, who has 19, and App has outscored Coastal 
22 to 8 here in the second half, Nate. And Plotson has 11 assists on 16 made field goals, and a lot of them are because people are throwing the ball. Michael, I'm honest, and he's making threes. Look at the shooting percentages. 10 misses out of 14 attempts for Coastal in the second half, and no three pointers. Man, stomach is churning right now, trying to figure out the combination to get in there to make them more productive. Dixon. Diva gets it to Devontae Jones. I would say start right there. Devontae Jones got the dribble knocked away from him, however. And a break for the Mountaineers. Brown into the front court. Now they'll circle back and reset the offense. Devontae Jones comes off the screen. They blitz it or they double it, and they slapped it out of his hand. Six on the shot clock. Forrest got his man in the air. Step back, three on the clock at the logo. Hit the rim. That's the best 30 seconds that the guys from Conway, South Carolina have played in the entire basketball game. Mustafa, nice step to the basket. Mustafa now with 13. Double never came. Esam Mustafa took advantage of it. He's pretty good with his left hand. He's a right-handed player, but he's really good with his left hand. Nate, I know it's not 2021 basketball, but perhaps feeding the low post and getting the ball to Mustafa like old-school hoops might be the answer for Coastal in this game. Oh, there's no question about it. It's so much more effective. When we saw the shooting percentages or the amount of misses they had, good job by going away from the defender that time. R.J. Duhart landing in with the left hand. It's not the sexy three-point shot or the dribble drive. It's the old school back to the basket, post up, put it off the glass, and Mustafa gets another rebound. But that might be the way Coastal has to play to get the win tonight. Three-pointer, finally, the first three-pointer of the second half for Coastal comes from Tipler, who's tied at 42. He gets him in bunches, and the more they drive the ball, that wasn't a fast break opportunity, but it was close. The more they contract the defense, the Tipler's going to stand behind that line. Now, Monacy on the feed and a whistle. And a timeout on the floor. The Anthony Tipler yeah. with his first three back, three pointer of the game. Three Medieval will find you if you're open. Tipler's open. And if he's open, he's going to make it. Built basketball tournament championships for the next five years. Championship games tomorrow in the women's and men's bracket. App State and Coastal Carolina tied at 42 as we are now under eight minutes to go. Devontae Jones, 2019 Freshman of the Year in the Conference, 2020 Second Team All Sun Belt, two time player of the week. This season, they have denied him the ball in the second half. Yeah, he had a good first half, and you know that he was the top of the scouting report. You know that Dustin Kearns talked about him at halftime, saying, guys, we can't let him go off. They have done a great job of stopping him individually, and then when he comes off screens, they have doubled him and tried to slap it out of his hands. The points he has are those uh, layups or, or fancy layups, whatever you want to call it, in transition. He hadn't had a lot of open looks. Even with all of that, he does have 11 points and eight rebounds, five of 11 from the floor and a couple of assists. And you see he's number two in the conference and scoring behind Michael Flowers ahead of Cedric Russell, Shahade Wells of UT Arlington, and Corey Allen of Georgia State, your top five. Dixon and Mustafa fought for the ball, and they lost it out of bounds. Friendly fire, guys. It's kind of like in the outfield. Someone's got to call for it. Yep. Especially there, there was no black shirts around. Duhart. Missed up close, and Mustafa gets another rebound. Eight boards for him to go with his 13 points. Spin move, left hand, shovels it up there, missed. And Duhart the rebound. Kind of hurried that I mean, He had the lane all by himself, just him and Duhart. Take your time, make your play. Kind of hurried it. He's got the muscle on Duhart. Duhart's as tall as he is, but he's got more muscle on him than yep. Duhart does. Gets his head and shoulders past him, he wins. Got Jones right out there on Almonacy. 
And now Diva out there guarding the three-point shot, and Delph comes up empty, but Gregory got the rebound. Now to Forrest. Pump fake, floater, rolled off the rim. Off of Diva's hands, out of bounds. R.J. Duhart is making his presence felt on the glass in there. He got that last one. He kept the position, uh, possession alive. And that time he fought for it, and it went off to Chanticleers. Inbounds comes to Delph, and he got fouled, and Delph will go to the foul line. Foul's going to be on Dixon. First foul on him. Team fifth foul, so getting close to the bonus. Little misdirection. Everybody's on one side of the floor except Delph, and it's him against Dixon. Just out muscled him for the ball. Dixon has been called for a couple technical fouls this season, so. As you can see right there, Tipler's kind of calming him down, so is Devontae Jones. Technical fouls, not what you need with six and change to go in a one-point game. So fine, line, fine line between being a tough competitor and going over the line. This is just the fifth free throw attempt for App in this game. And they're now three for five. Delph with eight points, three rebounds, and 31 minutes of work. Second free throw gives the Mountaineers a two-point lead with six and a half to play. Jones lost it. Forrest running a break. Ahead to Delph, and Delph going to call a jump ball, and it will be App's ball, won't it? No, nope, it's going to be Costa's ball. Pardon yep. me. Tipler gets a hand on this right on the drive right there. Could have called that a foul, too, but he didn't. And Appalachian, excuse me, then, Coastal has the arrow, as you just said. Smart move here, not to let Devontae Jones bring it up. Take the heat off of him. Just let him do his thing. Got it slapped away from him last time. So Coastal down the floor, chance to tie with the bucket, take the lead with a three. Dixon takes the shot. Won't count because there's bodies on the floor. Monte Jones the, took the brunt of an offensive lineman knocking him down. There's so the offensive lineman. Delph picks up the foul. That'll be his second. Fourth team foul on Oof. Appalachian State. And he got him at the shoulder right on, right under his uh, right arm. Hopefully everybody's okay. Floor's cleaned up and we're good to go. So down to our final six minutes here in the men's semifinal. Georgia State already spectating and doing some scouting, figuring out who their opponent's going to be in the final. Might not know until the final horn here. Could come down to the last play of this one. It's been nip and tuck all the way. Diva fumbles it away, and App comes away with it. And Gregory missed the layup. Got his own miss, put it on the floor, scramble, and a foul is going to be called. I think Dixon. That would be his second. So six fouls now on Coastal. The next foul by the Chanticleers will put the Mountaineers in the bonus for the rest of the game. Well, they could have called out of bounds. They could have called a lot of things on that. But I'm looking at the statue here. That's the 15th turnover for Coastal Carolina to only eight for the Mountaineers. That's seven possessions where you just gave the ball away. Almonese gives it up to Delph. We're down to seven on the shot clock here. He fumbled it away, and Diva comes away with it. Wasted opportunity for the Mountaineers. Opportunity here for Coastal for the lead air ball. Wow. And last touch by Devontae Jones. 
Tipler's a good shooter. He doesn't miss the whole thing. He usually hits the rim or something. That was crazy. Coastal, second best scoring team in the conference behind Georgia State, averaging 80.7 points per game. Season low of 58 on January 31st. They might break that tonight. Stuck at 42 with just over five minutes to play. It's funny, we go stretches where both teams get easy buckets, then we go stretches where nobody scores, either side. Forrest. And again, Coastal comes down the floor with a chance to tie or take the lead. Deba, tie game. When you're 6'6 and you see an opening, you gotta take advantage of it. Prima Diva did just that. Just his second bucket of the contest. He's got six points, six assists, four rebounds. The Prima Diva comes down normally looking to pass rather than shoot. There's a little uh, ghost screen by Mustafa, and he just blows by everybody and lays it in. Meantime, Tipler was called for the foul back on the defensive end, and that puts App in the bonus the rest of the way. So Almanis, he's shooting one for one here. And he missed just, it. You can see that when he left his hand, it just was going to the side of the rim. Chance for Coastal to reclaim the lead. Deba goes strong to the hoop. Back to back baskets by Deba and Coastal on top again. Prima Deba has six assists, and you, like I said, he's look, looking to pass. Last two times he figures, heck with this, I'm going to win the basketball game. Goes back to back layups. Our fourth lead change of the game. Coastal has led by as much as 11, and App has led by as much as seven. It's a two point game with four to go. And it always comes down to defense late in the game. Who's going to stop the other guy? And Dell fumbles it out of bounds. Boy, I don't know about that one. I thought it was slapped out of his hands. There's Deba's layup from the left side, left hand. It looks like if you look in the mirror, the exact opposite. He went right side with the other hand laid it in. Deba. Bounce pass to the corner, and Jones missed the three-pointer. Almanasi gets the rebound. Good look. It was a good look. Got to hit the good looks. Yep. Everybody's a shooter. You need makers. Stolen. And Green traveled. But Coastal on top by two. Three and a half to go. Coming down the home stretch in Pensacola. Now for our strong news, the game that is presented by Hercules Tires. R.J. Duhart with only five points this evening, but this one was with authority. A Herculean dunk, if you might call it that. 46-44, though, with three and a half to go. Almancy, 19 points. Almanacy, pardon me, with 19 points, six three-pointers. In the second half, App with five threes to Coastal's one. You see the spread on the leads, and App State has made just one of their last 12 field goals. And Cliff Ellis's team, three and a half minutes away, if they can hold on to the lead, going to the Sun Belt final. Dell from the corner, in and out. <laughs> He's halfway down. And Deba trying to take over this game offensively with two big baskets in the last couple of minutes to tie the game and then co uh, give Coastal the lead. Very out of his personality, too. That's not what he does, but he must just figure, I want to take the game over and try to win it. Lay up, lay up. And then Garrett Green on the follow gets fouled. Might be thinking somebody's got to do it. Oh, no question. He's responsible for points. He's got eight points and six assists. Well, I like to say that's about 20 points worth. Oh, no question. He always has the assists. I'm telling you, Garrett Green is just, he's the uh, 
kind of do-it-all kind of guy. Nothing great, but he contributes everything. 13-2 run for Coastal over the last eight and counting. And a four-point lead for the Chanticleers. Forrest, the bump, whips it out here to Gregory. Dell in traffic. Shot too hard and a whistle. Foul's going to be called on Coastal. And that'll put Delph at the foul line. Dante Jones gets caught on screen just enough to get the shot off. And then Diva comes over to back. And he's right there. Delph is two for four at the foul line. Mountaineers four of seven at the foul line. Makes it a three-point game with just under three to play. Can't worry about making a mistake either way. You just got to play aggressive and let the shot fall where it's supposed to fall. Because it is officially crunch time. Indeed, Diva the easy rebound. Three-point game as he walks it up the floor. Diva eight this points, six rebounds, six assists. Solid line score, and he's had the big shots here in the second half to put Coastal on top. Offensive foul. Who committed it? It wasn't on Devontae Jones, I don't think. Mustafa. Mustafa. That's a pretty good job if you're an offensive lineman. You just know you're allowed to do that in basketball. Half comes down the floor. Under two and a half to go. A three will tie. They get it in the hands of Almanasi. He's the one who can make one. Indeed, he's done it six times in this game. And he's standing in his spot. So can that guy right there. Forrest drives off the legs of Mustafa and out of bounds. I took a little time to get that off. We only have eight seconds left, and Coach wants to talk about it. The Prima Diba. The redshirt sophomore guard out of Sweden has had a big second half. If anybody's responsible for this coastal lead, it's him. Back behind the back and then the little spin move. Six foot six, as we said, he can get up near the rim, and most guys that guard him will be bigger and slower, or he is bigger than them. And so far, so good for Ibrahim Adiba. Responsible for a ton of points, 8.6 assists. Yeah, number one in the Sun Belt at the end of the regular season, an assist per game, and he's got six here tonight to go along with his eight points. Two really big clutch baskets here down the stretch and six rebounds. Coach Ellis fired up in that huddle after 46 years. Unfortunately, can't, we couldn't go to any practices this year of any teams, but last year, I went to a couple of coastal practices when I did games, and after 45 years, he's as enthusiastic as a 20-year-old when he coaches. Coach Ellis is one of my all-time favorites. I've known him from his days at Auburn. I've had the opportunity to work with him in the booth and on shows, and certainly he has been a pleasure to work with his entire career. Going up hard for the jam of the foul by Jones to deny. He just loves the game when you ask him about it. That's not a bad foul considering that was an easy layup. Make Appalachian earn it at the foul line. Donovan Gregory's going to get it. Devontae Jones got the ball, but got a whole lot of both arms as well. Hopefully Donovan's okay. That's a good hard foul by Devontae Jones. You never want to see anybody get hurt, and certainly that's not his intention, but you want to make sure that ball gets nowhere near the rim so it can go in. He hit the ball first, so he's going for the ball. It's just, a, unfortunately, Gregory landed on his kind of back and leg. Hopefully he's okay. Let's face it, when you block a dunk, when you block a forceful play like that, somebody's going to end up on the floor. Yep, there's a lot of force going up for that man. Yeah, I don't think there's anything untowards about that play, no. and I think that's exactly what the officials, Owen Short right there, you can see, although we can't read their lips through their mask, you can see by the expression and the nodding of the head that there is going to be no additional foul on top of the two-shot foul coming up here for Gregory. And the best part of that was they made that decision in about 10 seconds, not four minutes. 
So Gregory at the line, first time tonight. Rebounds either way, really important if he misses. He's got 11 rebounds tonight, but only two points, five assists. So he's done a lot other than score. One more free throw. And it's a one-point game again with just under two to play. And from what the net from both of them. Coming down to the wire in Pensacola. Winner advances to play Georgia State in the Sun Belt Championship game tomorrow. Forrest going for the steal. And no foul, just knocked it out of bounds. And they are allowed to review this, obviously, under two minutes, and they will. Forrest is pretty convinced that he didn't hit it last. I'm not sure. So we have the ability to take a look at it again. Uh, unless Jones' fingernails touched it as he was falling down, I think Forrest touched it last. The ball's rotation never changed. That's what I looked at the first time. Yeah, and Forrest then... seems to think it did. And I don't think we have any video evidence, at least so far as I have seen, to overturn the call on the floor. Maybe, maybe, yeah, it maybe watch the rotation of the ball. Yeah, right there, it's might good. have. It's got to be indisputable to change it since they gave watch the this. ball yeah, two shots. The ball to changes clear. direction a little bit right there. And that might be that Devontae Jones yep. did touch it before it went out of bounds. I'm never going to guess because when I do, I'm always wrong. I'll let the officials make it. It looks decision. like there was a little bit of change in the rotation of the ball after his hand passed by it, but the officials did not see it that way. Didn't feel like there was enough video evidence to overturn the call on the floor. Coastal remains in possession. Backdoor cut is stolen away. Smart play by Forrest on the backdoor cut to steal the pass. Down to 90 seconds to go. App is down one. They have the ball. Gregory driving in, tried to muscle it up there, and Garrett Green comes up with a big defensive play. He's a Swiss Army knife. He just does so many little things. All right, Coach Ellis called the set. Deba. Spin move back to Devontae Jones. Takes the three with nine on the shot clock. Ball ricochets out and is covered by Delph at the foul line. Jump ball, possession arrow pointing in the Mountaineers' favor. Now the shot that clears got the shot they wanted with the guy they wanted. He just didn't make it. Devontae Jones got an open three. I mean, if you're Co Coach Ellis, you'll take that every time. Yeah, that's the open three. I know there's nine on the shot clock, but that's an open look. And that's your best player. You're you probably go. not going to get a better open look in the last nine seconds on the shot clock. Take that. He just didn't knock it down, and now App comes back down the floor with a chance to claim the lead with now under one minute to play in regulation here in this semifinal. No matter what happens, you better find Mr. Almonese if he gives the ball up, because they're going to look for him behind that three-point line if he gets it back, him or Forrest. Yeah, watch for him in the corner. That's exactly where he's going to go, either that left wing or that left corner. The drive by Dell put it in, and App State on top, 49-48. Tough shot with little contact. No foul, but little contact. And now Coastal behind by one. Chanticleers have two timeouts remaining. Coach Ellis going to let him play on here. Jones has it to the corner. Tipler for three. The miss. Rebound by the Mountaineers and Gregory. And now a foul by the Chanticleers in the backcourt with 17.9. They had to. The shot clock was off. Chanticleer's got two open looks for two threes. There's the drive by Delph. Big time off the glass for an easy conversion. Easy for me to say. No foul by Mustafa. Just a really good play by Delph. So Forrest at the line rattles it in. Forrest, a great free throw shooter, 76%. Was 12 of 15 at the foul line in the victory against Texas State last night gives 
app a two-point lead. Coach Ellis has to decide, make or miss here. Do I want to stop it or do I want to play it? And he now wants to stop it. A three-point lead, Nate, with 17.9 to go. Cliff Ellis has been in this huddle over a thousand times. No question. Two thousand times. The he has been in this situation so often. What's he going to draw up? Well, the tough decision for him is my best player and my best three-point shooter just missed their last open threes. Do I go back to him or do I go to something else and just try to get a quick two and then foul again? And that's my next question. Do you go for the three or do you try to get the ball to Mustafa down low? Get a two, maybe get a foul, get a three-point Yeah, ball. I think because of what just happened the last two possessions when Devontae Jones missed a three and you can see Tipper right through the huddle right there, he missed a three. I think you might want to go inside now. Dustin Kearns is going to double him if he gets it. He'll put him at the line for a one and one or two rather than giving him an and one. So the, the strategy wheels are turning both ways. But I think you might go inside, and if Mustafa gets doubled, then you kick it out for a three. Well, App State has a foul to give. They're still at five team fouls. That's big because that'll take some time off the clock. That's right. So even if they foul Coastal right here before they can do anything, it just stops the clock. It doesn't put them on the line. Well, he might have told them as soon as Mustafa gets it, grab him. Just foul him, right? Yep, before he even attempts to get a shot off. And then off. you're going to make him run another set, yep. inbound the ball again. So Deba, when he picks it up, the clock will start, and there they go. Ball goes to Green, and a foul. They're going to give him three shots. They're going to look at it again. Wow. I thought the ball just got there. I didn't know that he was shooting, but it's hard for us to tell from our vantage point. Remember, we're high above the floor in the upper deck of the Pensacola Bay Center. Well, you can tell by the reaction of Dustin Kearns right there. They're going to look at it again. They're going to say they're going to look at it. Well, they can't change the call, but they can say it's two or three. It's a, it's a sweep through move when he gets it. Definitely behind line. There's the sweep through, and he's smart enough to go through the motion as a shot. Whether it was one or not, Devontae Jones did the right thing. That's a stretch to call that a shot. Watch the official, though, the minute it happens. He's going to stick three fingers straight up in the air on, on the baseline. Right there. Foul. Then the other hand went up to yeah. three. Got to give. Devontae Jones a lot of credit for having the wherewithal to when he was fouled to jump up in the air and act like he was shooting. I'm Absolutely. not at all convinced that's what he was doing. It was the sweep through move as you described it as if he might put it on the floor. But as soon as he heard the whistle, he made the shooting motion. Absolutely a good move by him. And now it's 51-49. If you're Garrett Green, or you're Mustafa on that lane, you got to anticipate a miss. If you're Appalachian, boy, you hit the rim three times twice. If you're Appalachian, you cannot give an offensive rebound off here. So RJ Duhart on one side, excuse me, and Donovan Gregory on the other side. App has one timeout. If he makes here in your Kearns, do you call a timeout? Yeah. No, well, Cliff Ellis did. Interesting, yeah. So Cliff uses his next to last timeout right there. We're tied at 51. This is an incredibly smart play by Devontae Jones. I don't think he was shooting, but he certainly made it look that way as soon as he heard the whistle. Well, James Harden made a living doing this. He sweeps through. He knows he gets fouled, and you're right. He makes it look like I'm trying to shoot the ball, and the official was very emphatic by one fist for the foul, and the other hand went up with three fingers. So we're tied at 51. Both teams have one timeout remaining. It's got to be Gregory here. And Justin Forrest and Almanasi open in the corners for threes, for a three. Our final semifinal of the day. Four of them here today at the Pensacola Bay Center. Two women's, two men's. This one's going down to the final shot. And Forrest picks up the dribble, crosses half court with seven seconds. 
Gotta hurry up. Justin Forrest, four seconds, timeout. Wow. Called by Dustin Kearns with 3.4. I think they were going off a high ball screen, and Coach Ellis came out in the zone. And it, it hesitated him enough where Dustin Kearns figured, I gotta stop this, because we gotta have a better look. There he touches it right there. It looks like Garrett Green, they're in a 1-3-1, and Garrett Green's trying to get a trap up top. And you can see Dustin Kearns top of your screen figures, now I don't like this, I gotta get a better look. Smart move by Coach Ellis, really good move by Dustin Kearns. So 3.4 on the clock, no more timeouts for App, and Coastal has one remaining. And the ball's probably around half court. Oh, they gave him at the hash mark, that's, yes. that's right. It's close to the point. bench. Yep. Time to get the pass and get it up. Almanasu, Forrest at the horn, and we're going to overtime. He had 3.4 seconds, got it, dribbled once and passed it. I mean, you gotta be more aggressive than that, I would think. Another overtime game here in the Sun Belt Tournament. Watch, there's no, there's no uh, urgency. Hold the ball, and they're coming off, they're coming fast off a screen. But there's only three seconds to go. But that's not a bad shot. No. That is certainly a makeable shot for Justin Forrest. Absolutely. Yep. It's not a bad look. I can't argue with an extra five on the clock. And each team gets a timeout. Since they had none left, you get one in overtime. But the bonus situation is still there. That's right. Uh, the next foul by App State puts Coastal in the one-on-one -on -one bonus, and Coastal already has 11 team fouls, so App's shooting double bonus here in the OT period. First thing you do when you get in that hell is tell everybody, all right, guys, take a deep breath. Maybe we could have won it, maybe we could have lost, but we didn't. We have five minutes to win a basketball game here and get into the finals. Coach Ellis. Don't just let it go to by the way said that he came out in a one three one and confused yeah. Appalachian. Yeah, absolutely. Threw a wrinkle at him <laughs> on the final play of the game. And if the ball would have been passed to the side to Almonte, I think they would have trapped him to eat up some clock, not to steal the ball, just to mess up the offense. Against that defense, the open spots are the deep corners. The ball was nowhere near the deep corner. Winner will play Georgia State tomorrow in the Sun Belt Championship game. That's going to be 7 o'clock Eastern on ESPN2. Second life for everybody here. Fonte Jones getting the troops together. So, all right, guys, I made the free throws to put us in this spot. Let's just go win it. And here's your first bank and trust bracket. Georgia State eliminated Louisiana. 84-73 earlier this evening, and now we await the winner of this one for the Sun Belt Championship game. And a spot in the NCAA tournament. Chanticleers have not been to the big dance since 2015 when they won the Big South. App State has not been to the big dance since 2000. Appalachian State is 0 for their last 11, and no field goals in the last 9-11. They made free throws but no field goals. And they still outscored Coastal 31-22 in the half. Old school hoops, man, 51-51, that's <laughs> yeah, old school. Is. We've had everything but the four corners offense, right? 51-51 <laughs> as overtime underway here at the Pensacola Bay Center. Delf, long three, Candid. Adrian Delf with his first three-pointer of the night after four misses in regulation. Supreme confidence. Deba slices on through, wild shot, got his own miss. Gets it back to Devontae Jones. He goes flying through the air, and Gregory has it for the Mountaineers. Dante Jones trying to get the call there. Just threw it up there thinking he was going to get a call. Did not. Forrest pulls up the mid-range off the iron. And Coastal able to save it right there. Gets it across the half-court line. Going to set up their offense. Hey, 
Mustafa pulls his way inside and banks it in. Mustafa now with 15. And the ball went into Mustafa, and there was no white shorts within 10 feet of him. A lot of black ones, but no white ones, and he had the whole lane to work. 7 of 11 from the floor for Mustafa to go along with his eight rebounds. It's been a big factor in this game for Coastal. It's a one-point lead for App. Well, you got to guard Forrest out there. Almonese step back three off that back iron, and Jones comes away with the rebound. He's got a double-double now, 14 points and 10 rebounds in this game. Inside for Green. He got loose behind the defense. Nobody saw him. One-point lead for Coastal. Everybody's staring at Devontae Jones, thinking he's going to make a play, and Garrett Green got underneath, and Devontae Jones found him. Six lead changes, four ties. Dell, another three-pointer. How do you explain Adrian Dell? 0 for 4 in regulation on his threes, 2 for 2 on his threes in the first two minutes of OT. Great athletes have lousy memories. Monte Jones falls down here. Oh, he slipped. He tripped over Garrett Green trying to get out to the shooter. Didn't make a difference. Delph stuck it. Two point lead for App State. Delph has hit two threes. Jones tries to answer with one of his own and a miss. And Gregory comes out of there. Ball popped up into the air while scramble for it. Coastal's got it. Deba goes right at the basket and lays it in. Well, he's been the layup guy here. Devontae Jones shoots an air ball, and then it, as App brings it up, the ball gets deflected, and that man lays it in. Ten points for Deba. Eight rebounds and six assists. Tied at 57. Working on a triple-double. We go double overtime, he might get it. Be cool to see a triple-double. In college. Forrest, way off the mark on the three-pointer. Diva the rebound. Well, 10 points, nine rebounds now. He'll walk it across. Chance to give Coastal the lead. Spin move, Dixon rolls off the rim. Mustafa with the rebound, gets it out of there to Dixon. They'll oh, reset the, the offense. The back to move. Mustafa they go. <laughs> he throws it back out. Inside out, inside out. <laughs> well, he's been stuck in a bad spot and he didn't throw up a bad shot, it was smart. Dixon flips it to Mustafa, he got stripped. All of that and they never got a shot off. Oof. One minute left in our first overtime. Forrest initiates the offense. Inside, Duhart. They fell asleep on Duhart. App has a two-point lead. It's a tendency to watch the best player on the floor and try. everybody tries to stop him. That was Forrest, and Duhart was left wide open. Deba drives again. Wild shot this time. Rebound. It's on the floor. Nobody's got it yet. And finally, App does. It's Elf comes away with it, clears it on a long pass to Forrest, and a whistle. And Forrest just heaves it to the hoop. There was a lot of people on the floor, and all of a sudden, the ball came out. And this is James Forrest. This is all about the respect for James Forrest. Three guys focused on Forrest, nobody focused on Duhart. Absolutely correct. Foul was called on Dixon. That's three on him. And so Forrest at the line, shooting two free throws. Two for two at the line. At nine of 13 at the line. Three-point lead. So Tipler comes into the game for Coastal. He's kind of a three-point specialist for him. Forrest takes his time. Three-point will tie it. Plenty of time. 
Shot clock is off, however. Comes to Jones. And Jones left it behind, got knocked to the deck. Let's see what the call's gonna be. Gonna have a foul on the Mountaineers. And that's gonna put Jones at the line for two shots. So Forrest now has three personal fouls. The foul was there. Yep. Not the first one. Jones. That's right. It should be a one and one because that's just 17 fouls. Pardon me. I was thinking that they had more than that. I thought you were hesitating because you're going to give Jones shooting percentage and then you didn't want to give him the old you know what. No, just going to correct the <laughs> fact that it's the one and one and not the double bonus. That's good defense by Appalachian to play 20 minutes and then five more and they're still not in the double bonus. And 60-59 with 18.8 left in this first overtime. And Cliff Ellis uses his timeout here. Or one of them, I should say. They'll still one, have one. And one, Amp has one. When the, number one, he wants to make sure the right bodies are in there for what he wants to do. And then he's going to give them the strategy and what to do. I don't so think you foul right away. Be? I don't think you foul right away. 18.8. Okay, yeah. I agree with you. Okay, so if you don't foul right away, which I concur, right decision, when do you foul if you don't get the steal? Well, you trap in the backcourt and get it across half court. And once it comes across half court, you have to foul quickly because Appalachia is not going to shoot the ball. They're going to sit on the ball. So I think you try to get it in the backcourt, a steal, a trap, maybe even two traps. A 10 second call, a deflection, something. And if that doesn't happen, then you foul as soon as it comes into front court. And you really don't have a choice as to who to foul because the clock's your enemy. You got to foul whoever has the basketball. 60 59, App State trying to get to the Sun Belt final for the first time ever. So is Coastal. Chanticleers have not been there either. Georgia State, the team, one of these teams will play tomorrow five times in the last seven years. And likely whoever it is, the Panthers are going to be a, a pretty significant favorite in that final tomorrow night. But of course, it's 40 minutes of basketball and anything can happen. Now, if Duhart gets the ball, I foul him right away. I'm sure they talked about that. He's a 54% free throw shooter. So if they throw it to Duhart, you foul him instantly. He's going to run away from the ball. Smart move. Now, Monacy has trouble getting it in and finally does. They get it to Delph, who they foul right away. And... I think that's Forrest, yeah. Yeah, Forrest is down on all fours. A little collision as he tried to make a cut. Watch Justin Forrest as he tries to cut. He's in the middle of that three-man group. He just runs into he runs into Mott Harvey and Mott Harvey grabs him and throws him down. Trust so, me, he's not coming out of the game now. Less than a second ticked off the clock, so Coastal was very expeditious in getting that foul done. And that puts Delph at the line. He is three for six at the line tonight. Oof, big miss. No doubt. Now the rebound is especially important either way, an offensive rebound or a defensive rebound, if he tends to miss again, and there's Tipler back in the game. So Delph will get one more. Coastal does have a timeout left if they choose to use it. And Delph gets that one. It's a two-point game for the Mountaineers. 17.9 to go in this first overtime. Coastal needs a two to tie, a three to win. Steve Dima will make the decision. Dima. And Devante Jones got stripped of the ball. And the foul is going to be called on Coastal. And Tipler fouls out. Watch the official emphatically under the basket. 
signals well we couldn't see it from that from the wide shot he signals it was a, a strip not a foul and then the appalachian and that was the right call. Fouled. Oh, yeah. And then Appalachian gets fouled. Yeah, Deba attacked the lane, got it to Jones. Jones started to drive, and Justin Forrest just raked the ball right out of his hands. So Forrest shooting two right here with 9.3 on the overtime clock. 62-59, and Forrest now with 12 points. And three of four at the line. That's a big one, but this gives him a four-point advantage if he makes it. No doubt. This could be a crusher. And he makes it. Four-point lead for App with 9.3 to go. Okay, Coach. Down four with 9.3 to go. What's the strategy offensively? If you make a three, it doesn't win the basketball game so I don't think you go for a three I think you blow right by everybody and try to get to the rim because you need four points right an and one would be nice and a three if you miss it game's over so get to the rim try to get fouled try to get a three-point play and then got to make up the other points somehow with a steal or a foul again but the right. faster you score the faster you have to foul and, and get the chance back but here's my argument about going for the two you get the quick two and that's gonna put you in a situation where you're gonna have to foul right away and that's going to put App State in a situation just like they were in. You hit two free throws True. and you're right back to four. That's why I'm a proponent for going for the three here. Well, you want a three and get fouled. That's what you want. And then yeah. you get the four-point play. You want to win the lottery, <laughs> too. But, yeah, the, but the, what I'm saying is the three puts you in a position where you're not back right where you were a, a moment ago. And Boy, the foul got... was committed well before Dixon got to the hoop and shot it. Aggressively take it, make the defense make well, maybe a play. Not. I think they gave him two. Yeah. Well, either way, it was going to be a two-shot foul. I think he, I don't think he missed this. He tried to make it and then foul right away. So 63-61, you know, and so you're kind of right back where you were, you know, five or six seconds ago when Forrest was at the line. But, now but I mean, they didn't, have, they didn't have a choice. Right. I mean, but they were going for the two right there, so they get the two free throws. That's, again, why I say, you know what, I'm going for the three right there. Well, now you get the opportunity to steal the ball. Yes. Four or five second call. Mott Harvey's in the game. Six foot six, big athlete. Coach Ellis might have just said, I'm going to foul him. In other words, blow that whistle quick because <laughs> I don't want to waste any time. I wouldn't put it past him to say that. I'm going to, we're going to foul him. Blow it quick. Well, yeah, there's nothing wrong with saying that. No, and Dustin Kearns is telling his guys, when you catch the ball, be tough with it because they're going to try to slap it out of your hands. Two hands on the basketball. Oh, here comes another football set. Going to line up, spin around, and there's the foul right away. And again, very little time ticked off the clock. That's, uh, I give Coastal a lot of credit here in this overtime. They have fouled about as quickly as you can foul. Yep. yep. And they need that time to get to the other end, make or miss by the Mountaineers. So there's the foul at the top of the screen where they fouled Duhart. They just grabbed him as he started to sprint. Well, it's two shots anyway, so you might as well foul the, the uh, lowest percentage shooter without the clock running. It would be a two-shot foul because the clock wasn't running, but it doesn't matter. Well, the plan has now worked because you got a miss. Now, because he's such a low percentage shooter, the miss could be a crazy rebound. You got to get the ball and go. Yeah, I mean, well, if it's a bad miss like that one right there, yep. that's that's problematic. No timeouts. Duhart gets one more. Three-point game, 4.8 to go. Now you know what you have to do. 
Long pass comes back to Deba. Deba got stripped, and Appalachian State is going to the Sun Belt Final. The Appalachian State Mountaineers going to the Sun Belt Championship game for the first time in program history with a 64-61 victory over Coastal Carolina. Sean DeClear is going for the three, and Donovan Gregory makes the play of the game by stripping the ball loose. No shot by the Sean DeClear. It's game over. And that's perhaps the most crushing, disappointing about the thing is you had 4.8 and you never got a shot. Exactly. Watch this. Here it is. Watch number 11 on defense. Here comes Deba. He's going to try to blow by everybody. On the crossover, Gregory got all ball. Gregory with the steal and now the celebration for the Mountaineers as they knock off Coastal Carolina 64 61 and the Mountaineers the number four seed out of the Eastern Division have come to Pensacola and won three straight games very tough to do against some very tough opponents but they did it and we got Georgia State and the Mountaineers in the finals and then, of course, a lot of disappointment and emotion on the coastal side as Devontae Jones perhaps may have played his final game with the Chanticleers, and now the floodgates open. As yes, the reality of perhaps your final collegiate game ending like that, one victory shy of getting to the Sun Belt final. 64 61, App State a winner over Coastal. And now the Mountaineers will face the Georgia State Panthers for the championship and a spot in the NCAA tournament tomorrow night. Nate, what do you think about Panthers versus Mountaineers? Well, it's going to be one team that wants to get a good shot and maybe score in the 60s in the, in the Mountaineers. And Georgia State wants to fly up and down, being the number one scoring team in the Sun Belt Conference. Contrasting styles doesn't mean one's better than the other, just different. Well, we know for sure that the Mountaineers are playing their best basketball of the season, and so are the Panthers, who have won seven straight. So in that regard, should be one heck of a matchup. Appalachian State knocks out Coastal 64-61. And now for my partner, Nate Ross, our entire ESPN team, and the Sun Belt Conference, I'm Matt Stewart. So long from Pensacola. Championship game tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Eastern on ESPN2.